Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Oh my gosh, we have a fun topic to talk about this week and it's NEAT. N-E-A-T. NEAT. It's an acronym. It stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. So, Here's what NEAT is. It's one of four factors that contribute to your overall energy expenditure for the day. Calories burned, if you will, right? So there's sleeping, there's eating, there's sports-like exercise. There's actual exercise, going to a yoga class, um, jogging on the treadmill, all the things people do for exercise, you get the idea. And then there's NEAT, which is everything else. So examples of NEAT include walking the dog, uh, dancing in the shower, uh, fidgeting your leg when you're sitting in a chair, running upstairs to grab something out of your bedroom, um, doing laundry, doing yard work, uh, uh, yeah, just walking, making a meal because you're walking around the kitchen, um, talking, right? Everything that's not eating, sleeping, or actual exercise. So I looked this up, I Googled NEAT, and I saw this cool schematic that showed examples of NEAT and so forth. It's everything I just told you, walking the dog, dancing in the shower. And then it said, one hour of exercise equals 4% of your day. NEAT equals 63% of your day. And I don't know what they were counting, you know, whether that's by calories or by time or whatever, right? I guess maybe that was by time. Um, but the point is, NEAT is a very overlooked factor in terms of fat loss and in terms of weight loss maintenance and in terms of mood and overall health. So you've probably heard the movement around exercise that says you don't have to actually exercise to exercise, just park further away when you go to the grocery store, take the stairs instead of the elevator, right? You've heard that? Because there are studies that show that, um, and don't ask me which studies, because I've just heard people talking about this and so forth. I, I've read it somewhere, but like my understanding, how, let me put it a different way. My understanding is that the research shows that um, by a lot of metrics, it doesn't really matter that you are quote unquote exercising. What matters is that you're getting activity in, right? But I particularly want to talk about this in a weight loss context because here's the thing about losing weight, especially for more than a short period of time, right? And of course, here in Brightline Eating, the goal is to lose all your excess weight and then maintain it for the rest of your life, right? For most people who come into Brightline Eating, losing all your excess weight means losing weight for an extended period of time. And what happens to the brain when you lose weight for an extended period of time? Pop quiz. Well, the brain decides that there's a famine happening, right? Remember, our brains uh, are not at all accustomed to our modern environment. They're thinking it's 2,000 years ago and that, you know, it's clearly winter or even worse, winter has passed and there's no uh, berry bushes around and we can't seem to catch an antelope, right? Like the brain starts to freak out if there's a caloric deficit day after day after day, week after week, month after month. And what it does is it's a good steward of our livelihood, our, our lives, our bodies, right? And what it does is it makes adjustments. The brain makes adjustments. What does it do? Well, it turns down the furnace. It, it lowers thyroid hormone to slow down the metabolism so that, and this isn't a permanent thing, this is like just for now, <laughs> till we have some more calories coming in, we're going to uh, lower the metabolism. Although there are studies that show that if you lose weight in certain ways, that damage can be uh, at least very, very long term, if not permanent. Uh, when you lose weight the biggest loser way, of course, by basically starving yourself and exercising however many God, ungodly numbers of hours they exercise a day on that show, um, that can result in permanent metabolic damage, right? But so thyroid hormone goes down, which slows down the metabolism, um, and we get more sluggish. Uh, other hormones get adjusted like, um, like leptin and ghrelin, so we feel hungrier and we've got uh, less of a signal coming in that says stop eating, just in case we happen upon a berry bush, we'll be sure to eat every berry that's on it. 
So the brain makes hormonal adjustments to conserve energy. And one of the big things that will impact is NEAT. So you won't even notice it, but suddenly you're lying on the couch reading a book and you're thinking, um, oh shoot, this would be a lot easier if I had my reading glasses on me. And then you think, oh, but they're upstairs. You're like, eh, I can see well enough. And you just lie there on the couch. You know you're gonna read for another hour, but you keep going without your reading glasses because you don't wanna run upstairs. Well, if your brain hadn't adjusted those hormones, you probably would run upstairs. But here's the deal, you can run upstairs if you're aware that your brain might be turning down your neat and you need to focus on it. You need to focus on remembering to dance in the shower, remembering to take the dog for a 15 minute walk instead of a three minute walk. You can focus on neat. Now, I think one of the best ways to do this is just put a pedometer on your hip or if you've got a wearable, some sort of device or whatever, phone or whatever that's tracking your steps, just notice and gamify it. Yeah, try to get 10,000 steps in. Not by going for long walks, but just by moving around a lot, right? So one of the ways you can contribute to your weight loss journey is just making sure that you're not uh, becoming a slug. <laughs> becoming a slug, not exercising, but just moving. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It improves mood, it improves sleep. All the benefits that come with exercise also come with I don't know about that actually. I haven't read this literature thoroughly enough to know, but my guess is most or even maybe all of the benefits that come with exercise come with NEAT, right? So you wanna be making sure that you're moving. It's an important thing. It's a big, big, big piece of daily life. And that's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.